Places that we cannot get because of this rain. All the streams are still running. You're getting stuck just about every day. So we had a, a very good rain season and late rains and it makes the hunting tough. So we just gotta hunt harder. That's it. Let's go. Hey I'm Bob Folkride. Welcome to another Winchester Legends. This week Africa for Plains Game with my good friend Teeny from Warthog Safaris. Hunting in Africa is a dream for many. And this week it's a reality for Winchester legends Bob Folkrod as he pursues the often underestimated wildebeest. The wildebeest to me is like, uh, you know, hunting uh, the poor man's uh, Cape Buffalo. They're big, they're powerful. You know, they got the, you know, not as big a boss obviously as a Cape Buffalo, but you know, they've got all the, all the stuff there. Well, a blue wildebeest is probably one of the most common animals in the northern part of South Africa. Mature wildebeest bulls tend to hang out by themselves and sometimes in small bachelor groups. You can find a big bull in a big herd and it's always hard to get a shot at them because there's a lot of eyes on you. But it's very exciting to pick up a wildebeest spur early in the morning, track it down, and then finally get into a position where you can make a shot. And there's nobody better at putting a hunter in that position than Teeny Bamberger of Warthog Safaris. It's his ability to track and close the gap on African Plains game that keeps Bob coming back. You have a lot of choices out there with no matter what you're trying to hunt, especially in Africa. You walk around the shows and there's a lot of African outfitters out there and you say, why should I go with this and why shouldn't I go with this one? Well, here's a good reason why you may want to go with the Warthog Safaris. He's totally set up for whatever that you want to do. Some of the most common species that can be hunted out of Warthog Safari's main camp is the Southern Greater Kudu, Limpopo Bushbuck, Warthog. We have 26 huntable antelope species, including six of Africa's dangerous seven. Bob's in hunter heaven for sure, but to get a clean shot on a trophy wildebeest, he and Teeny will need to defeat all of its razor sharp senses. Hunting a blue wildebeest can be very exciting since they have different terrains that they are moving in. When you're coming out of thick cover, going over the mountains, you always have to watch when you're going over the rocks because they have very keen senses of hearing, smelling and seeing. When you get them in the open areas, they can very easily be alerted by movement. So you got to make sure that you take your time, get in a good position, make sure that they don't see you, make sure that you play the wind all the time and then finally wait for the right opportunity to get a good shot into it. And then they're tough, they can take a lot of lead. A formidable and elusive quarry like the wildebeest demands precision and performance under pressure. So Bob heads to the range to sight his rifle in before taking to the bush. Okay, here we go. Perfect, it's right there. Either I missed it or it's in the same hole. It's in the same hole. <laughs> you think that'll work? That's perfect shot placement. Ready, let's go. With his rifle locked in, Bob and Teeny head into the bush. And believe it or not, after all the trophies and all the adventures, this hunt could turn out to be a first for Bob. Well, I talked to Teeny at uh, the Harrisburg show, and Teeny says, have you ever shot a wildebeest? And I go, no, I haven't. <laughs> the many times I've been to Africa, I have not shot a wildebeest. It's not every day that Bob goes after game he hasn't taken before and it doesn't take long before he and Teeny encounter an impressive specimen. We spotted a wildebeest way off in the distance and the wind was going to him so we had to come back around. So we came across a, a little hill and we saw the wildebeest. We were lucky to find it in a nice open field and he was standing just trying to get a little bit of sun on himself. I looked and I get my binoculars, yep. And he was locked down us right then. I mean, we had just broke over the top, we're in the brush and bam. I mean, he's got, he got us locked down. Yeah, he sees us, he's already seen us. You don't have much of a shot there, do you? No, hang on a second. Yeah, bad shot right there. Just hope he moves to the left, but he's probably gonna come out in that clearing to the right. You see that clearing to the right of the brush? Yeah. I think that's where he's gonna come out. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I had just a little window that I I could see, and and he's facing us, but it was a it was a head-on shot. Just wait for him to turn properly. I have no trouble shooting something straight on. I mean, with the ammo and the rifle, I got confidence in, in everything that I'm using, except the wind is gusting a little bit, and that's a little bit too iffy. It was, I think it was 
325 or 330 yards because he has got the perfect uh, setup for his rifle, a nice tripod. There you go. When he finally turned, he gave like a frontal side shot and Bob said, no, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. A wildebeest is an extremely hard animal to take down and you really got to you got to hit him in the boiler maker. Hopefully he would turn right or left or something, give us a broadside shot. The trouble is that when he turned, he, and if he, he took too many steps one way or the other, I wouldn't have the shot. We'd have to set up, he'd see us move, and the game would be over. Then he finally gave us a perfect shot when he turned, facing to, to, the, to our left. Are you on him? Yeah. Whenever he gives you the shot. And that gun went off and you heard a quap. And boy, he jumped and whirled and twisted and turned. And, and I knew I had him. I had a good shot onto him. And he ran over there and poof, 50 yards. He ticked over. You could see the dust fly from his back. I didn't think we were going to get this one. He was oh, I didn't either. He was spooky. Now we got you know, a wildebeest, which is my first wildebeest. You know? I can't believe all the times I've been to Africa, I never shot one. Well. I've been waiting long enough to see this bull. Let's go look at him. I think we need to go look at him. You're down, big guy. Oh yeah, oh my goodness sakes, absolutely well fantastic animal. Great adventure, great hunt, the whole thing, I tell you. And you look at them, they almost look like a little Cape Buffalo, you know, and tough animal, but they wasn't too tough for that ammo. I know you got a lot of choices out there with ammo, but when you see it on a hard animal like that and it put him down that quick, to me it's a simple choice. Fantastic animal right there. With his first ever wildebeest in the books, Bob Folkrod heads back to the bush in pursuit of his second one, as P.H. Teeny Bamberger leads the way. This little bit of rain has actually helped us. Because if we pick up the first spur now, I track, you look in front, because it's only rained about five, ten minutes ago. So then I'll concentrate on the spur and you look in front if you see it. We were hunting real hard and had to cover a lot of ground. At one time, we got close to the wildebeest. We could finally see droppings and smell them. We got on a track and tracked him up, and he came out in almost in a clearing. He was probably 100, 125 yards. I dropped down on one knee and, and he's totally facing me. I'm hoping he turns just a little bit more. And there was some brush hanging down in front of me. I had too much brush. And he was straight out. I got brush right in front of his chest. I thought you were going to smoke him. Gosh dang it. I says, I wish I almost had that shot off. And there was a whole bunch of branches right down there in the way. Almost. He almost. He just had to step one little step. If we give him a little time to get back on his track. Yep. Yeah, get him. Give him, give him 20 minutes and see if we can catch up with him again. As Bob would say, that's just hunting, folks. But one extra benefit of having your prey slip away is the chance to keep on hunting. And Bob wouldn't have it any other way. Bouncing back from disappointment is a big part of hunting. And that's exactly what Bob and guide Teeny Bamberger have to do after a close call with wildebeest number two. We're into the afternoon hunt and we're, we're right on to him. We've already had one encounter where we've seen him. I dropped on one knee. There was too much brush in the way. He was too much quartered at me. We've been tracking for a few hours. Finally saw wildebeest. We almost had a shot when Bob had to move a little bit and the wildebeest was out of there. And we waited a few uh, minutes and then decided that we're going to continue following that wildebeest. If we give him a little time to get back on his track. Yep. Yeah, give, him, give, him a, give him 20 minutes and see if we can catch up with him again. So we waited a little bit and we got back on the trail again and uh, this little pig comes out, this little warthog. I thought he was going to blow everything. You could hear him coming through. He had lost his mommy and, uh, you know, and he come right up to us and I almost started laughing, you know, and then he goes off, you know, and I think, God darn you, don't you spook our thing. I know we're going to get this wildebeest. We're so close to him and any little piggy is going off, you know, looking for his mother. That, that was a highlight. We needed that breath of fresh air and kind of a laugh. And, then we got serious again and got on the track. Baby warthogs aren't the only critters that can blow this stalk on the wildebeest, as the African bush is teeming with animals ready to bolt and spook their prey at any moment. See how those ears pull? No bolt with her. 
out the gas. Kudo. No orange. Oh, but there's one. Yeah. Young bull just came out and went back in. Are we having fun yet? Sure, it's fun to see Wild Africa on display, but Bob's eager to get back on the track of his second bull wildebeest, even in these uncommonly quiet conditions. It's quiet. Yeah. It's hard to stalk when it's this quiet. I don't care if you're hunting white-tailed deer, I don't care what you're hunting when it's this still. It's extremely hard to, uh, to get in on something. If you had the wind blowing or something like that, it would make it a whole lot easier. I like the wind to be able to blow no matter what I'm stalking. I like to be able to see it. I don't care where you're hunting, whether it's in the States, whether it's in Canada, or whether it's here in Africa. We were having a tough time. The stalking is tough, but as every hunter knows, persistence almost always pays off. And just as their window begins to close, opportunity knocks for Bob and Teeny. We kept on going for probably another hour or so. When we finally got into a position where the wildebeest was coming somewhat towards us. And I don't know why, whether he thought we had left, whether he wasn't sure what we was, but all of a sudden, here he comes back again. You know, we was up to the side, he must have made a great big U-turn and all of a sudden we're coming. And now we're, we get in and we're hoping we get next to a tree. But it, he was still coming at us, that was, that was the key, he was coming at us. He didn't know we were there and we managed to get into a position where there was a very small window of opportunity. We got through a thick area and there was a little clearing where we'll be starting to walk towards us. Get a couple glimpses, you could have, you know, almost a shot through there. You couldn't, I couldn't really pick out a kill zone. Finally, it, it, it all came together. He's gonna walk right in front of us, can you believe that? We knew this is gonna happen and we waited and Bob was very patient. And he got up there and the sun was on to him. He was glistening, he, I mean, he didn't have a clue what was going on. When the wildebeest finally came out in the open, it didn't take Bob long to finally put a good shot in him. I had a Model 70 Super Grade uh, 300 short mag, uh, you know, one of my favorite Winchester guns. That animal didn't have a chance. The wildebeest came right in the open, posed for the shot, and he nailed it. Oh, you want it? Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. There we go. Yes! Yeah, oh yeah, he's going down right there. Get him again, get him again, get him again, get him again. Wait, wait, oh, he's down. Yes, wait, wait, he's down. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's a poor man's buffalo right there, you know that? <laughs> wow, what a setup, man. We've been waiting for this wildebeest all day long, and finally it gave us an opportunity when it came through that clearing. Bam! That hit him and I bolted another one. He went around the team and says, hit him again, hit him again. He was already wobbling. There was no reason to hit him again. Now, if it had been a piece of dangerous game, you bet you I'd have been hitting him again. But this one here, he went down. Congratulations, well done. You well, had a lot of patience. You were waiting <laughs> for that shot. And I, I was getting angsty. I was saying, hey, Bob, are you going to shoot or what? <laughs> but luckily with Bob's experience, he managed to get into a position and uh, put a beautiful shot on the wildebeest and managed to get an uh, excellent trophy. And this was a perfect scenario. You were waiting, you were playing it out, and finally it gave you that shot. You nailed him good. I like it when a plan comes together. Picture perfect, let's go look at it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Another good wildebeest right there. You down, big guy? Oh, look at that, right on that shoulder blade. Ain't that something? Poor man's Cape Buffalo right there, you know? Have we got some stories to tell. <laughs> So it gives me uh, two wildebeest. They are a hard animal to, uh, to kill, and they're a hard animal to uh, the stock, especially when you're on the ground. We've hunted a lot of uh, different areas, a lot of different terrains, 
and like you've been saying it's been tough hunting this time of the year we had real late rains a lot of water but this is a result of a good day hunting so we couldn't have asked for anything better so this made a perfect deal we stocked him on the ground in his own territory and we was able to get him what makes a blue wildebeest such a beautiful trophy is the shine the color of the skin it's got the dark and light gray colors on the coat and it makes it a real beautiful trophy what a way to end the african safari again I'm already starting to make plans for next year. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Yep, you're more than welcome.